Welcome back to the Flip Flop Fab Shop. <clears throat> Here's an introduction to my 1996 Toyota Land Cruiser. Uh, my, my dad bought it for me in high school for two grand. It was sitting in a field for like two or three years. Um, it was bone stock. It is the dark green. I don't remember the paint coat off the top of my head. Dark green and sitting in the field, so a lot of the clear coat's gone on the roof. And it wasn't this bad when we got it. So we wrapped the hood to cover it up. We wrapped it black, but you can see that was like five years ago. So the wraps, I power washed it over this summer and blew the wrap clean off. But it was bone stock. We put an old man emu two and a half inch lift with the heavy springs on it. And we put 35s. We got these from some guy on Marketplace for like 300 bucks or something like that. But you can see they're starting to dry rot a little bit. I don't have a lot of tread, so I'm gonna need new tires some sometime in the near future. But she's got 283,000 miles, something like that solid solid unit here um i recently got a better paying job a real job full time so now i have money to actually work on the stuff i need to do and i want to get this thing reliable and stout so i can take it on road trips and such so what we're going to be doing i ordered a lot of parts These bushings on the sway bars are gone. See? The drop link gone. This little bushing in here gone on both sides. So I got those. Um, let me crawl over here. So up here at the front, I didn't order this new ball joint thing. I don't even know what that's called. I didn't order one of those because it looks pretty good. Um, I guess when I take it apart, I can diagnose that a little better. And I actually did end up ordering the little ball joint piece just because I was in there. And these, I didn't order new of these because these are nice and soft still. But I did get the bushing that's up at the front because they're gone. You can see. I also got... I also got the Trail Gear Steering Stabilizer Kit with the the upgraded drag link and relay rod, I believe it's called. And it also came with the steering stabilizer. So I'll be putting those on. And since we lifted it, the rear has more clearance in the front. It's got some stink bug action. So I got the Iron Man 4x4 puck. I think it's 30 millimeters, something like that. Goes up here. It should, I don't remember the measurements off the top of my head because I ordered it like a month and a half ago. But it should bring it in like between a quarter of an inch from the front and rear. So it should be pretty level. So I'm excited to do that. And I have also have a leak, two leaks. You can see right here, this uh, thermostat bypass. There's an O-ring up here and an O-ring down here. I, I don't know, I believe probably just the bottom, but I got all of those ordered. I'm gonna replace those. And then right here, my distributor O-ring is leaking. So I have one of those also. I'm gonna be doing both of those. I also got this. I need to put a real clamp on there, get a new hose, whatever, but it's okay. That's not a big deal right now. I got an assortment of parts in here. I'll show you. Here's those pucks for the front. These are the rear uh, sway bar links. Here's my new, my new rods. You can see that's pretty pretty stout. I weighed myself and I 
held these, these are actually 20 pounds. So they're, they're pretty stout. See here, here's the tie rod ends, I believe. Some hardware for the steering stabilizer, distributor O-ring, thermostat bypass. And here's those little bushings. These were annoying to find. Here are the little bushings that go in the sway bar, uh, like the end, the sway bar end bushing. What else? Where'd my, no. Here's my steering stabilizer. So, yeah, a lot of work to do. Um, it absolutely drives terrible. It's all over the road. I don't even think the sway bars are doing anything right now. Yeah, the body roll on this thing's ridiculous, but I'm gonna go ahead, take you on a quick little ride. So I'm gonna show you a before and after. See ya. Okay, so 281,000. Watch. Burns like a kid. It does burn oil like nobody's business, but small small price to pay when you're driving a land cruiser and also gets like 11.8 miles per gallon that's on the past two tanks i've got 11.8 so definitely better vehicles out there for gas mileage but you also don't get lockers so pretty proud of this thing it's been neglected for the past few years but hopefully I'll get her back up, running reliable, driving around, cruising pretty good. There's also a lot of little things I want to do to it. Like, I want to get a new steering wheel. I think there's like a, like a Camry has the same steering wheel or something. I think, I don't know, it's been a while since I was thinking about doing that. I want to get a, I want to recover this or find one that's in better shape. Same here. The seats were, nasty the seats the leather seats were completely junk so we have these like water resistant covers or whatever I want to get those re get get it reupholstered eventually I'm really sad about this but it'll have to be okay for now the rear seats are actually in decent shape no reason to do anything there as you can see about 45 you can never drive this thing with the steering wheel like just leaving it in one spot you constantly have to fight it because look look at that and i'm not even moving on the road so that's why we're tackling a bunch of suspension stuff and like i just don't all the tie rod ends they're gone sway bars not doing anything because as you could tell the rears barely were even attached so they got like an inch of play before they do anything so I'm gonna take her back home start working on it starting on the rear passenger side sway bar um, on this side you can get the top nut off and break this pretty easily um, I didn't want to drop this bracket because as you can see this bolt already broke a long time ago. Um, so this side's pretty accessible, pretty straightforward. This side, so I learned from the last side, you need to spray some PB blaster, etc. As you can see, I, this is probably, what is this, for the brakes? I don't know. And the gas tank's in the way. So you can't really get to this top nut very easily unless you take the wheel off and I think that's kind of overkill. But on this side, I didn't want to do this in case these broke, but I broke the two bracket bolts loose and then I broke some PB, oh, I sprayed some PB blaster in there. And so my plan is to drop the bracket, 
take an impact to this top nut and then take this off. So you're going to want to take your 14, loosen the bracket. Once you get this bracket dropped, just take your 12 and zip this little guy off. Once you get that 12 off, this all comes off. Now you got to take this 14. It's faster. There's the old one. All right, now to get this bushing out, there's a little sleeve in there. There's a little sleeve. All right, there's the old one. So I'm gonna spray the hole with PB Blaster. Okay. I'm gonna push down on one side of this. Get one side started and just push. Not, not as bad as I thought it was going to be. And then take your little sleeve. Probably going to have to spray this also. Get your new. Goes like this. this and then you'll go like this like this then your nut will go on top but take those off for now take this 14 And I'm going to put anti-seize on this just because it doesn't hurt anything to put that on. Get your nut. It's going to snug it up for now. Snug again. Put any C's on here because there's no reason not to. All right, correction the top, it's a 13 out of 14. So once you get the top um, pretty tight, you're going to come down and tighten up this. 14 again. I got both both sides done. And as you can see, way more sturdy so i'm pretty pretty excited about that again i'm gonna get my pv blaster on the front spray all right um i already did the passenger side um what you're gonna want to do i'm gonna start with the front um like where it bolts up to the body so there's a 14 nut and a bolt 
So you're gonna need like two wrenches or something. Uh, at least for that side, you need two wrenches because you can't fit a socket. Um, for this side, it's a little easier. So I'm gonna do that. Now we're gonna take this piece down and this, um, these are both 14s and then this is a 19. You're probably gonna need a breaker bar for this one up here. So now the actual inside of the ball joint is rotating, meaning I'm not gonna be able to get this nut off. No. I like needle those vice grips. I'm gonna tighten it down and then squeeze on. That should do the trick. Okay, take your 14. Undo these. Well, oh, it's a 12, my bad. Right. So I ended up taking the sway bar out because it's too tight to get these in. And all you have to do is undo the uh, these little harness clips. I think for the front locker, at least in my situation. So I undid that, and then the brake lines run on this side, I think. I don't know. Um, but I undid that so I can get these little rubber deals in. I got one in, but it's hard to get the little metal piece in, so I'm going to do that. All right, got both sides in. Just use some pliers screwdriver some pv blaster to lubricate them it's not rocket science i already put the passenger side back together so now i'm going to do the driver's side first you want to start by on both sides i put the the front where it attaches to the body i put that on first to hold it up Yeah, that doesn't need to be ridiculously the, the body mount in. My new ball joints didn't come with a washer, so I just reused the old washer. And the new nut is a 22. Okay, so I put one bolt in. To hold it, I'm gonna go ahead and put the others in. Okay, now that all oh, this is tight, take uh, I don't remember what size this Allen key is, but you want to get one of those, stick it. In the end of the ball joint. <clears throat> and then just start tightening it. You want to keep that Allen key in one spot. Alright. It's all put back together. It actually took a lot longer than I was expecting. <laughs> but that's how it goes with working on cars. So I just took it on a little test drive. Um, I took it on the 45 mile an hour roads and I took it on the highway. So, um, big improvement. It's not wandering all around the road as much. Obviously the steering needs fixed, but definitely a lot more steady and it wasn't too bad to do. So if you haven't already done it, I would do it. I'm gonna, uh, 
show you how to install these 30 millimeter spacers for the front shocks it's like the well for the front suspension it's like the uh leveling kit and i have some measurements of the front and rear the rear was about one and a quarter inches taller than the front so hopefully this will level it out pretty good i have some pictures and measurements i'll i'll put on the video as well but half the battle is just jacking this thing up in a safe manner so first thing we did was put your uh, jack on that control arm jack it up to like a comfortable height and then put your jack stand underneath the frame that's like right right behind the mount for that control arm and then do that for this side also and you'll want to well before you do that you want to undo the bolts that mount the sway bar to that ball joint you want you want to undo all four of those and then you'll want to undo the 19 mil that holds the shock on both sides and then you can drop it and let it hang and then you'll get your spring out okay now that you got everything loosened up once you drop the suspension you can push up just drop it down and it gets kind of tight up here at the top so we're just going to put a little sheen of grease in here so it seats properly and doesn't get all crooked because there's too much uh, friction on it stick it up in there to hold itself and this little piece goes in this corner here Once you get this all in, you're going to want to line your shock up with the hole, then jack it up, then obviously put your hardware in, get your shock bolted up. And this is a 19. your shock on you'll just want to put your wheel on and then we'll put it back down on the ground then we'll put the sway bar back on So as you can see, the little puck, the front was at 38 and three quarters, and now it's at 39 and three quarters, almost 40. So it raised it pretty much an inch, which I am very pleased with because that means the rear is still a little taller. So that way, when I ever put a front bumper, rear bumper, and a spare tire and stuff, it should still be somewhat level since I have the heavy springs it should stay pretty level so I am very pleased with that and it wasn't too bad the hardest part is just jacking it up and making sure you're safe you just want to make sure you're on pretty like as level of a spot as you can find so yeah I'm pleased I hope this helped and thanks again for watching